The Supernatural Book, Episode 10. Time ticked on. Abraham was living his life as a story that is told, as a tale that was told. And we're telling it now. Abraham, as a soldier of the faith, remembered the promise that God gave him about his seed. He reminisced about the day when the Lord told him to look up and tell the stars. That means to count the stars. And the Lord basically told him that if he would count the innumerable amount of stars, then he would be able to count the children he would have, which would be impossible for him. For Abraham, that would be an impossible task. But the Lord could easily know that. I mean, he telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. He can see the end from the beginning. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. And Abram remembers the promise, but there is also someone else lurking around out there in the shadows that remembers it better than he does. There's a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down in it. And he was there when that small piece of the sword, the word of God, fell down to Abraham and informed him about his seed. And every time the Lord had dropped down a piece of that sword, the devil hears it and adds it to his arsenal. He's been eavesdropping. Every time the Lord drops down a piece of the sword, the devil hears it. That's why he knows the Bible just as good as anybody. And he knows that seed of Abraham is going to bruise his head. And his minions gather around as he calls for a meeting and says, Okay, idiots, we have to corrupt the seed. We need to get Abram and Sarai discouraged and impatient. We need to put a thought in the mind of Sarai, just like I did Eve back there in the garden. If I can mess the weaker vessel up first, then it will be a lot easier to get Abraham off his game. We're going to tempt Sarai to offer Hagar to Abram. He's going to have a child by Hagar instead of Sarai. That way I can corrupt the seed. You see, the Lord wants him to have the child with Sarai. But now in the meantime, make sure Hagar's looking good. She's representing me now. She, she has to have the attire of an harlot. Make sure she's adorning herself in immodest apparel. Make sure her clothes are so tight that it looks like they're just painted on. And Abram is a red-blooded man, and even a friend of God like him would have a hard time making a covenant with his eyes with her walking around looking like that. Because you know, if a man looketh on a woman to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. But meanwhile, back on earth, although Abram believes, he gets impatient and tries to help the Lord. Sarai suggests that Abram take her handmaid, Hagar, and go in into her and have a child by her. And I, I wonder who put that thought in her mind. You see, this was a big mistake. Hagar was an Egyptian. Egypt is a picture of the world. So this pictures the saint going to the world for help. And Abram should have waited. The angel of the Lord comes down <clears throat> and talks with Hagar. He lets her know that her son is going to be a rough character. He says, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Her boy is going to be a roughneck, a wild man. He's going to be born like a wild ass's colt, born to be wild. He's going to live the teenage dream, stay up late, chasing wild women, smoke, chew, hang out with those that do, charge up the credit cards, and be a thorn in the side of the real seed of Abram. Hagar might try to train him up in the way he should go, but she's going to let him grow up to be a cowboy. He's going to be a wild man. But anyways, Hagar has a child by Abram named Ishmael. And when Abram turned 99 years old, the Lord gave him a new name. One day the Lord zapped down real quick and appeared to Abraham as the angel of the Lord and said, and when Ab it says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And the Lord gives Abraham the sign of circumcision as a token of the covenant. And the Lord goes on to explain to Abraham that Sarah is going to be the mother of nations. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old?
and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Abraham laughed his head off about this, but yet he still believed. Because Romans says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And since Abraham got the giggles, the Lord wants him to name his promised son Isaac, which means laughter. And one day Abraham was sitting out there on the front porch, rocking back and forth in the heat of the day. And then three men stood by him, and one of them was the Lord. And he reassures Abraham once again that he and Sarah are going to have a child. And Sarah hears it and laughs. The Lord also passes on to Abraham a message of doom for Sodom and Gomorrah. Where all that's at. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous... I will go down now and see whether they will have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. Abraham knows that Lot is down there in Sodom, and he begins to ask the Lord, Okay, Lord, but what if you find 50 righteous people down there? He said, Okay, I won't destroy it for those 50's sake. Okay, Lord, what about 45? He said, okay, I won't destroy it for the 45's sake. He said, okay, what about the 30 or 20 or 10? He said, okay, I won't destroy it if there's 10. But there wasn't even 10. A lot of soul winning skills were a bit lacking. He blended in with the world down there in Sodom, and you could say he was one of the boys down there. Actually, they were probably gender neutral, so you could say he was one of them or they or it. Lot was the only righteous man down there. So the Lord sends two of his mighty angels down there to Sodom. Lot invites them in. They eat some food. You see, angels are ministering spirits, but they can take on flesh and eat without having to dispose of it later. Even if Lot had more than, than tacos, uh, hot wings, chili, and fajitas, they would have taken it like a champ. Um, they were about to lay down for the night, but this is when the Freaks come out in Sodom. The freaks come out at night. And as you would know if you made a Walmart run at 2 a.m. But they were exceeding fierce. Uh, they liked to hang out in the graveyards. I bet they were full of liquor and lust and fresh off a of pride parade. All the men of the city, both young and old, come out to Lot's house. This place was LGBTQP. And the Sodomites said something like, Lot? Bring them good-looking men out here so that we may know them. And I don't mean learn their name in hometown. I mean, we want to know them, know them. You catching my drift, Lot? And Lot replies, Guys, don't do so wickedly. Don't you know these are vile affections? You men with men are working that which is unseemly, and you're going to receive the recompense of your air, which is meat. Uh, Lot didn't go preaching to us now. I said, Lot, don't go preaching to us now. When you ran for office, you said you were all in support of our lifestyle. You even came to some of the pride parades. Don't you remember that pride rally you held, Lot? Or was that just to get our votes? You see, nobody could take Lot serious. He ruined his testimony. Lot's so messed up in his mind that he offers his own two daughters to the Sodomites instead of giving them the angels. Then, just about the time Lot was about to get his killing, the two angels pulled Lot right back in the house. It says, But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door, and zap. They smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the angels then began to explain to Lot that they are on a mission from the Lord to get him and his family out of Sodom so that they can destroy it. Lot goes to warn his sons-in-law about the coming destruction, but he is seen as one that mocked. He ruined his testimony. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew up on the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. She became a monument of what not to do. And Abraham got up the next morning and looked towards Sodom and he saw the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And Lot escaped, but everything he had burned up in the judgment. 
He was a saint with nothing to show for himself, and Lot never really gets back right with the Lord. He ends up drinking himself to bed at night and having children by his own two daughters. But time went on, and Sarah died. Abraham kept on going, and one day he sent out his servant to get a, a bride for Isaac, his son, the promised seed. He gets a wife for Isaac, and it's her name is Rebekah. And from these two comes Jacob and Esau. And Jacob carries the seed. And from Jacob comes the twelve boys that make up the twelve tribes. And the Lord changes Jacob's name to Israel. So therefore twelve tribes are the children of Israel. And the promised seed would come from one of these twelve tribes, the tribe of Judah. That's why Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah. The promised seed... The fierce almighty warrior would be in the flesh, the line of the tribe of Judah, and the scepter shall not depart from Judah. And God's covenant through Abraham went right on through Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve tribes. The promised land would be theirs. So you can imagine the disdain that old serpent would have had for him. They would have the land. They would have the crown. They had all the souls and the words of God. The sword that would fight off and eventually slay the devil would come through them. And those are four things the devil desired. So he has his crosshairs on Israel. And one of Jacob's boys named Joseph winds up in Egypt because he gets sold there by his own brothers. And the martyr Stephen in the book of Acts summarizes the story perfectly. He said, And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him, and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Sychem, and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emmer, the father of Sychem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abram, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. So the children of Israel are in Egypt. They've multiplied. There's a bunch of them. But there's a new king over Egypt that pictures the Antichrist that's full of the devil. And he knows not Joseph. And he's making Israel to serve with rigor and having them in hard bondage. But the Lord is going to raise up a deliverer. And that's what the next episode will be about.